Hello everyone, welcome to Connected. Once again, we meet here to connect with friends from all over the world. My name is Fabiana Espinosa. I'm talking to you all the way from Santa Cruz, Bolivia in South America. Also, remind you that you don't only see us through the Abby Ayala channel on, in Bolivia, but you can also follow us on Facebook, Twitter and YouTube. Today's topic is gonna take us to the world of ballet and we are going to dive in by the hand of Chloe Freitag. She is a very talented young woman that has decided to go on the path of ballet since a very early age. Before we start the interview with Chloe, we are going to get to know a little bit about her path. Let's meet Chloe Freitag. Chloe Freitag began her training in Minnesota at the Summit School of Dance and later continued her education with Gloria Govering at Minnesota Dance Theater as a trainee. Spending her summers at Pacific Northwest Ballet School and the School of the American Ballet, she was awarded scholarships for both institutions and received exemplary instruction from teachers like Patricia Barker, Darcy Kistler, Suki Schroeder, Kay Mazzo, and many others. Chloe Freita continued her professional career with Ballet Arizona before moving on to Miami City Ballet at the invitation of then artistic director Edward Villela. In her four seasons there, she toured with the company to Paris and performed some of her personal favorite ballets, namely The Four Temperaments, Symphony in Three, and Symphonic Dances. Additionally, she has performed multiple principal roles as a guest artist, including the infamous Giselle, Sugar Plum Fairy, and more. It is my pleasure today to introduce Chloe Freitag, who is talking to us all the way from Miami, US. Chloe, welcome to Connected. I'm so thankful and I'm so happy to have you here today. Let's go ahead with the interview. Please tell me, how did you get in touch with ballet? Did you have any influences? Um, you know, it's funny because it's something that I wanted to do forever. Like, I don't remember a time in my life where I didn't want to dance. Um, I didn't necessarily have anybody in my family who was a dancer or who influenced me or I saw them. Um, it was something that came from within for me very much. and. Even I, it started in preschool. I was um, watching like the little preschool class and I was too young to be in the class, but I was like, oh, I want to do it. I really want to do it. And I begged them <laughs> to put me in the class. And I was like, not even old enough to do it. I was two years old. I was like a baby, you know? Um, but it was something from within. It wasn't something that I was really guided towards by outside influences. I see. So your urn comes from a really young age, but so far throughout the years, um, tell us about how was your experience uh, on learning and improving your skills on, on ballet? Well, you know, it's not, um, when you're young, it seems so fun and it is fun, but it's also a ton of hard work, you know? So I think um, for, uh, throughout my youth, it was mostly just Fun and I love dancing and I love expressing myself and I had a ton of energy so it was a good outlet for me to just you know do my thing um, but then definitely the older you get the more serious it gets and I started training in different places um, around the US and realizing there was a lot more competition out there than I was kind of aware of in my little small town and so um, you know, you also have to be really strong and really kind of thick skinned and definitely the older I got, the more I have this kind of inner personality of like anything's a challenge and I like grab it and go after it. It's not like challenges scare me away. So definitely that 
personality trait helped me to continue my training and to continue to stay strong because a lot of people they they start to get frustrated and like oh this is too hard my teacher's too mean or there's too many good people and you get kind of overwhelmed by it and you just kind of let it go by the wayside and um definitely i was thankful to have um strong determination and that also comes from my mother my mom is a very strong determined like go-getter woman um so uh-huh. that influenced me to kind of stay on the path and keep training and keep studying um and really go after what I always wanted to do, you know. Right. So, how many years have been so far since your beginning? Since were you did you started as a little girl? <laughs> I mean, <laughs> since I mean, you know, I started dancing it too, but you can't say that was like proper training. That's like, you know, skipping around the room and, and you know, I mean, it's fun, but it's not like training. Um, right. so like serious training, I would say I'm mean, gonna have to do math here. Um, uh, maybe like 16 years um, of like dedicated training. Right, and um, on that path, like you said before, initially it was more like fun and some type of like entertainment. But then when things started to get real, and you realize that you have to put that part like from yourself, your discipline and being always like always looking towards that path. So what would you say the change there? Like what was what was the thing that was determined for you to say, okay, I'm gonna do this professionally and I'm gonna keep on this path? Right. Okay. So I mean basically um, when I got into my teenage years and started studying at different schools um, in the United States outside of my home area, um, I was lucky enough to be mentored by a really wonderful and reputable, beautiful dancer named Patricia Barker. And she was talking with me and was kind of like, you know, if you really want to do this, you have to make some sacrifices. Like, it's not just like, oh, you're going to dream to do it and hopefully someday it works out. Like you, she saw potential in me and she really guided me of like, you got to make kind of some drastic decisions in your life if you want this to happen. And what her suggestion was, was that I needed to leave my hometown. I was only 15 um, and she suggested I needed to leave my hometown and start training in a more professional environment. Not that I didn't have a fresh professional environment at home, but she wanted me to work with a company, like company um, environment. Yeah. And that wasn't provided where I was studying at the time. So um, she helped connect me and I ended up heading down to Arizona to dance in Phoenix for a bit. Um, and luckily I had family there. So I lived with my family for a year, an aunt and uncle of mine who I love so much and they're sweet kids. <laughs> It was actually like a great supportive transition into that kind of independent phase. But the following year, I um, auditioned for Miami City Ballet and was offered an apprenticeship there. And so I moved to Miami at 16 completely on my own, like no parents, no anything, my own apartment, my own, you know, wow. cooking, laundry, everything. Um, and so that was definitely a sacrifice for me, for my family, for my friends. Um, but it was very much influenced by this person that I really trusted and respected. And she knew what she was talking about. You know what I mean? Like I was like, all right, this is this is what I gotta do, you know? And and it worked out. Right. So I'm grateful for her advice and for following that and for my parents for trusting in me and supporting that. Um, because that was when it got real, you know? <laughs> right, so you, you're telling us that you, have, you had your family support and when it comes to schools, so back home you were going to classes to a school and then later you kind of have to belong to a, to a ballet group or how does that work? You know, it's, every area is a little different, but basically, um, especially for the higher level programs, you need to audition to get in. So I was at a school where anybody could go as long as they signed up and were interested to go. And, you know, and they offered scholarships and such, but it was, um, you know, it was open to the public. Now, the more prestigious schools are by invitation only or audition only. So, um, for example, for Miami City Valley School, I had to audition. I had to go in person and audition to get 
the opportunity to go there. So it wasn't just like anybody could go. Um, right. So, you know, it, it, it just the level of training, the level of the people in the class, um, because you can have a great teacher, a great instructor, but also if your classmates are kind of slacking and, you know, people aren't really in it because they, they're just doing it because it's an after school activity or whatever, that changes the dynamic. Um, totally. So, yeah, so going to a more prestigious center where everybody auditioned and, and you know, was selected to be there, it just changes the environment completely. I see. And then just to have an idea, on this 16 years or since you started, since you moved out from home and you started to go into these other schools, how many auditions did you have, did you encounter so far? Kind of an idea. <laughs> well, <laughs> that's a hard, um, it's a hard question to answer because at the time everything was pretty smooth. Like I auditioned for Valley, Arizona and Phoenix and got in and went down there and then auditioned for Miami City and got in and stayed there. Now I stayed in Miami City for four years, um, but I ended up leaving the company. Um, I was actually let go from the company, which was quite hard for me because I was devastated by that kind of I had so far everything had been pretty smooth, you know, and then it was like, oh, just kidding, you know, like drop off the face of the earth. Yeah. Um, and so that was tough. And that's a whole different emotional battle that I had to go through. But during that time, um, oh my gosh, I can't even tell you how many auditions I did. I, I auditioned all right. over. I went to Israel, I went to Uruguay, I, I did so many auditions, I probably couldn't count them off for you. Okay, and then how about presentations? Because, right, practicing and training, one thing, but they always ends up in the presentation or on the project that you're doing. So, so far, how many presentations have you had? That's like another... an average number, just to have an idea. <laughs> oh, I have to like literally look at my resume because I mean, it's, and even that wouldn't give me an accurate number. I mean, when we were performing at Miami City Ballet, we performed almost every weekend and our season ran from, you know, August through to May and sometimes through into June. So, I mean, every weekend for that amount of time, I don't know how many weekends that is. And we do multiple shows in a weekend. Um, oh, wow. And, yeah, and then now the company I'm working with, we don't perform quite as often, but we perform um, likely like once a month it's been. Um, so, and then you've got, you know, presentations from when I was younger and with Valley, Arizona. So there, it's really hard to, I mean, hundreds, <laughs> I don't know. Right, right, that's that's a number. And that's like, just to have an idea, the dimension of the work, you know, because sometimes we hear about it, like people that are not in the world of ballet or this type of art, it's just, you know, you don't know really like the level of the pressure or the level of the, the rhythm of the presentations and everything that it goes along, not only with the hard physical practice, but you know, the emotional part that you were saying. Yeah, it involves no, everything. It's a lot, physical, emotional, spiritual. It's like, it'll tax you on every, every level, but also it's very rewarding at the same time. So, you know, it's like that balance. Mm -hmm. Right, so let's talk about a little bit about the presentations. So far, what was the most significant presentation you have had and also what was the impact on you? So I think in my career so far, there have been two that were probably the most significant and both of them were significant for different reasons. Um, however, ironically, it was the same performance, the same production that I was dancing in. Um, just at different okay. times in my life. Now, the first one, um, I had already kind of mentioned to you about when I left my job at Miami City and it was a little um, down and out for a while. You know, it took me about two years, maybe more, to get back, you know, find a job again, get back in a regular environment. Um, and, and that was really tough. And I definitely went through a lot um, during that time. And I'm grateful for how much that has helped me in the long run you know our challenges are always like the best things in the end but during it you're like oh my god <laughs> but it was it was <laughs> and the very first show that I did coming back from that was monumental for me um mostly emotionally because it was such a um it signified that I had kind of crossed through that that emotional trauma and trouble 
and I was performing in my very first principal role, which is a lead role. I had never done that before in my career in general. And then also it's my first performance back after all this time. And I had all my friends there to support me. It was a performance in Miami. So all my Miami City Ballet friends came. My mom came, you know, my boyfriend was there. Like everybody was there supporting me. And that was so emotional for me. Um, like I just cried after the show. Like, like you just felt this. <laughs> release you know um and so that was definitely one of the most significant performances um the other i would say is the most recent one um the company that i've been working with we just went on tour up to new york city which was a really big deal i had never performed in new york city which is you know a okay. prestigious environment um and ironically uh -huh. it was doing the same exact piece that i had done that first time so it still kind of held that emotional um baggage if you will like in a good way like it held that kind of reference um so performing that then in new york city and again my whole family was there to witness um and i felt so much support and love and revisiting that piece that invoked a lot for me emotionally and artistically um that was like another big you know hurdle to jump over and and again after that show i felt this like huge release and you know, that's, that's why we do this stuff is because it, it releases a lot that you can't get that from another experience. Like it's a once in a lifetime experience and well, I'll never have that exact experience again, you know? Right, yeah. And also like as an artist, like you're in a different place in your life, like maybe you're dealing with different emotions or different stuff going on with you. So then how you present the character or the role that you're working can be totally different at different times in your life, even if it's the exact same steps in choreography. Right. Okay, so this exactly leads me to the next question. Um, in terms of your career that we are talking about exactly, what are the biggest obstacles that you encounter, not only when you are on preparation or on training, but like globally, on every single aspect? What are the biggest obstacles and also what are the biggest rewards? Uh, you know, I think that those two actually really do go hand in hand. and. Um, I would say, you know, the biggest obstacle that I faced, and I think that a lot of people have faced, is criticism. I mean, it's such a harsh world, and you're criticized from the day you walked in your first dance studio. Like your teacher will be like, "Oh, your your hip is not here, and your foot's not there," and da da da. You know, you're you're always being critiqued, and then you're also in front of a mirror all day long, critiquing yourself and trying to get everything as perfect as possible. But obviously, perfection's not not reality that doesn't ever happen so um definitely learning how to deal with criticism is the biggest obstacle in my opinion and and you'll get a lot of hate you know i know a lot of people who have had harsh things said to them i mean like it's not just me that's had like horrible horrible things said to you like things you would never want to hear <laughs> like people say to you and they say it, you know and without really any apology either it's a very like intense world um so knowing yourself and like understanding that that criticism isn't you um is a huge obstacle to overcome and learning how to take the criticism and like apply it in a way that's then healthy for you and not getting obsessed of like oh they said that i can't do this or da, 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 you know whatever it is that they that they say to you um now like word wise i think the same thing is like overcoming the criticism overcoming whatever your <laughs> okay, of course so rewarding i mean that's why that first show back i was like freaking crying and like overwhelmed because i was like i did it like i had all this criticism and they told me oh you'll never dance and you're not good enough and you don't have enough talent and you should do something else and like all these things where i was like god am i really doing the wrong thing i've been doing this forever you know like and you you have all these like kind of emotional battles And then when you finally are able to step through that and like come out on the other side and feel like you're in the right place again is the most rewarding thing. So definitely the two, I think, go hand in hand. Um, right. And as you say, uh, is the training, it doesn't only go by the hand of like physical training, right? Because you also have to like yeah. build your character basically. Yeah, and I think that's like one of the main things that maybe is missing in a lot of ballet training. Um, 
is mental training. You know, like they train us physically quite a bit, but it's not always addressed, and it depends on the the environment and the teacher. But it's not always addressed um, how you should train your mind, and that's honestly one of the biggest things I see in successful dancers is they're well trained mentally. You know, they're very um, they know how to get themselves into a certain space like quickly. Um, and maybe it's something they have like naturally, but or it's something they worked on, you know what I mean? So it's very important. Right. right. And I believe especially the, 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 the ones, the dancers that are starting since the, a young age, right? We, if, and even not only on this profession, really. Like there yeah. are very several professionals nowadays that they are lacking on that part of knowing how to deal with situations and as you said we all make mistakes there is embarrassment there is criticism and in order to like fix these things we kind of have to put the work for that too yeah totally and right? i think that's the thing that um that i hope maybe can be more apparent for for everybody you know like this not just dancers but this sense of like working on your mind and I mean, I love tools like meditation and things that can really help you to get yourself kind of in a place where you know how to deal with whatever comes up. I mean, we're all humans. We're going to feel emotions. We're going to mess up. We're going to have, you know, anger or whatever it is that, that comes through. But then knowing what to do with that instead of just like letting it eat you or making you react a certain way, um, you know, that's it's very, very useful. Right. Chloe, I love to hear this story and I want to ask you, we have one more question to go. Right now we're going to go to a really fast cut. We'll be right back. People at home, stay connected. We'll be right back with the last question for Chloe Freitag. Welcome back everyone. We are still connected with Chloe Freitag. She's talking to us all the way from Miami and today we talk about her path on ballet. What would be your advice? to give to any type of person or any any person that actually loves and appreciates ballet? Well, you know, I think um, uh, there's, there's so much advice that could be given. And um, definitely, like we had already been talking about, the, the, the work on your mind and your mental capacity for dance is so important and that translates for everything. I mean, it's not just for people who are interested in dance, but anybody who really takes the time to strengthen your mind and strengthen your own inner connection, I mean, it's gonna help you immensely. Um, and then of course too, um, for ballet, like, I mean, we love what we do, right? We do this and, and anybody who dances knows how fulfilling it is to get on a stage, but we can't do it without an audience. <laughs> like if no <laughs> cares to see it, there's nothing to give. The whole, I love, um, you know, dance and its origin is storytelling. You know, it's not just, oh, right. pretty pictures and lines and somebody doing something beautiful. It, the origin is storytelling. And you look at all the even classic ballets, they're telling a story. And now dance has evolved where it's not necessarily such a clear story, but it's always, there's always an emotion that's trying to be portrayed or passed through to the audience members. And that's a conversation. You don't have a conversation just by yourself. You have to have somebody there to, to tell it to. Correct. Uh -huh. So definitely anybody who's interested in ballet or dance, um, get out and see something, you know, check out what's going on in your local area. There's probably things you never even knew were happening um, and they could be very interesting. And yes. so I definitely recommend you to get out there and check it out. Uh -huh. And for the ones that are, they, um, for the ones that are thinking about maybe ballet as a career, mm -hmm. regardless of the age, what would you tell them? I would say perseverance through anything. Like that's gonna be your biggest strength is to always keep going because it's super easy to just drop it. You know, that, that's the easy way out is just drop it and let it go and move on. And that unfortunately happens to a lot of people. But if you're willing to persevere, to push through, um, even if you're not trying to dance professionally, if you just wanna, you know, take ballet classes and study but you get super frustrated right away because, oh, it's really hard. I mean, yeah, it's really hard, <laughs> you know, you, but you, it's a, <laughs> you can take like 
with that attitude of this is going to better me in whatever way it betters you, you know? So stay consistent, persevere, you know, keep pushing forward and keep that determination because that's what's going to help you whether you want to dance professionally or whether you're just looking to um, to enjoy dance. If you want to enjoy it, you've got to put in the work, you know? they There's a very famous quote, um, by one of my favorite choreographers, George Balanchine, and he said, first comes the blood and sweat and tears, and then, if you've said your prayers, the beauty. <laughs> so, and only then. <laughs> work has to come first. Right. Chloe, thank you so much for the time you spent with us today. I'm going to give you a little space so you can say hi to the audience, and also, if you have any an Instagram account or whatever where people can follow you and see your work and all the beauty all the beauty of your ballet, please go ahead and share it now. Sure. So uh, you guys can follow me on Instagram. It's my name, so at and then Chloe C H L O E Freitag F R E Y T A G, and stay connected with me. I'd love to talk to you guys and you know stay keep this connection. This is what this is all about, right? So. Super cool. Thank you so much for having me too. It's been great. Thank you, Chloe. Always be well. Mwah. Big kiss for you. And until next time with me, bye. Thank you, Chloe, for the determination and the passion you show on your path. It is truly inspiring. And as Chloe was saying, I think that we can all relate with the part of that we all encounter pressure, we all encounter obstacles, and we all encounter difficult situations that sometimes put our energy down or just make us think that we want to give up. So the advice that I will give you today, always take the time to do something or to take some time for your own mind to clean up from the bad thoughts and feed yourself with good thoughts. Determination, passion, um, discipline are key in order to be successful in whatever career, and not only as a career. You can be a student, a parent, um, or whatever you're doing in your life. If you need, if you ever feel the pressure of quitting, take a moment, think about why you like to do that, why have you decided, and that is gonna get you back on the path and keep on going and that for sure you are going to get great results. I will see you again in seven days. If you want to tell me about somebody that knows or is doing something great for the world or for themselves, my email address is conectadosbolivia24 at gmail.com. I'll see you again next Saturday. Until then, 